and welcome to Forum 360. I'm your host, Bill Steven Saus. We are a program with a global outlook, taking a local view at some interesting topics. And uh, today we are going to look at art. Art in our region, specifically the Summit County Art Space and what it's all about. Our guest is Executive Director of the Summit Art Space, Camelia Fisher. Have, have a, a, a wonderful time here at Forum 360, Camelia. We're glad you're here. Thank you. What I'd like to do is ask you, uh, what is Summit Art Space uh, about? And uh, I know it's downtown Akron on Market Street. Give us a little bit of information and background. Sure. Um, Summit Art Space is truly a, a community art center. Um, and our goal is to do a couple things. Number one, to make art accessible and, and understandable um, to everyone in our community and to support artists in every step of their journey. Um, right. So it's a kind of a unique blend of actual working artists and their studios and then inviting the public into gallery shows. Now as executive director, you've been since early 2017, you've been very active in trying to uh, bring the art of Akron and Northeast Ohio and Summit County especially into focus. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the events that you typically host. Okay, um, I think one of the things I'm um, going back to, to making um, art accessible and to help people um, just in their joy of understanding art and experiencing art, we try to make uh, our exhibits more reflective of things that will be interesting to the community. So one of the sh exhibits we did in 2018 was called 24 and it spotlighted the 24 neighborhoods of Akron. And it was a photography show that each um, artist had to, could select any of the 24 neighborhoods and depict that in any way they wanted. Um, so it raised that elevation of some of the neighborhoods who are really doing great and, and other neighborhoods that needed a little more attention. Going into transition, trying to change Absolutely. Um, how about the, the type of art? Um, years ago, historically, uh, and especially in the Midwest here, we had a lot of visual artists that were uh, you know, painting on canvas. Uh, but it's really expanded over the last, you know, couple decades. And now, as we look at the 21st century, what are we seeing in this Akron area, in the Summit County area with artists? We're cert certainly still seeing a strong influence of the 2D on canvas. Okay. However, we're also seeing a lot of 3D, we're seeing a lot of collage. Um, we're seeing more contemporary, more modern art. Uh, we're also seeing things that people, I, um, the non-traditional art, we have a, an exhibit we do every year. The first exhibit of the year is called Fresh, and it's to take this new look at what art is. Mm -hmm. We see a lot more of, um, you know, a lot more fabric. Textiles are coming in. You've got a lot more of the blending, so you've got metals um, along with um, maybe it's a ceramic. So you've got a lot of um, blended art, and it's just a new way for artists to express themselves. What, what I think is interesting about it is it's people that have a creative side but weren't traditionally ever referred to as artists or yeah. saw themselves as an artist. So we're broadening what that perspective is, um, and that also broadens our understanding of art. Now this summer, uh, we are experiencing some modern art. Uh, this is the parallax uh, creative art that we're saying that's called Parallax. How did that name come about and what uh, what is involved? This is more of a modern art uh, program. It is. So ongoing. it's a contemporary art um, exhibit that we planned in conjunction with Front, which is a three-month um, exhibit that is taking place in Northeast Ohio that is contemporary, um, mainly in Cleveland, but also in Akron mm -hmm. and Oberlin. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to draw some more focus to contemporary art in Summit Art Space. What we found, and we kind of knew it already, were we don't have a lot of contemporary artists that are in Akron with the opportunity to be in an exhibit. So we have a lot of first time um, artists in, in this show. Some of our Forum 360 uh, viewers and listeners on River City Radio and our viewers on the Western Reserve Public Television Fusion Channel, some are artists and or have uh, friends who are artists. How can they get involved in Summit Art Space and bring their art in the future uh, to this area? 
I get asked that question a lot. Um, so I, we have our call for work for the, for the exhibits within our galleries mm -hmm. um, on our website and at summitartspace.org and there's a call for art there. So you can submit and it very clearly identifies what each show um, is. So we have two shows right now with open calls for art. One of them is um, it's a show in our Summit Art Space on Tusk, which is our Barberton location. Mm -hmm. And it is about Barberton then and now. So it is to reflect Barberton either as it was or as it is emerging. Because if, if anyone's familiar with Barberton, it's emerging as a, it's rebranding itself and, and reestablishing itself as a pretty um, strong community network within um, Summit County. And then we also have Against the Sky, and that opens in our Summit Art Space on Market, which is in our Akron location. And that is, um, it's, it's, it's basically anything reflected against the backdrop of the sky. Now, I'm seeing, uh, if you go to www.summitartspace.org.org, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see the gallery hours, you'll see the various shows. Um, since you've come on as executive director, um, Camelia Fisher, what things are you thinking that you want to focus on in the next few years? I think it's important to make sure that what we're doing within um, Summit Art Space focuses on local artists. Local artists. And I think we, we, we've done that in the past, but I want to I want to make sure that we're doing it, whether it is local artists getting the opportunity to be an exhibit and helping them become established artists so that people start purchasing their work, which is our over, you know, our overarching goal is how do we help support artists in their endeavor to make a living as an artist. Um, so I think that is really important mm -hmm. and also to make sure that anyone who wants to learn about art has that opportunity. So those are our two focus. Um, as a membership organization, uh, that's how Summit Art Space started as Akron Area Arts Alliance and it was a membership organization started in 2001 mm -hmm. and that really wasn't as open to the public. So when we disbanded as a membership and became more adopted, more of the business model in 2015, um, from my perspective, it's how do we, how do we um, open our doors as wide as we can so that people want to come in and interact with the artists. Our artists, we have organizations um, within our studios, but we also have individual artists that have studios and they're working studios. So the, comp you know, the, the public can come in and start talking to an artist and find out, you know, where their motivation comes from or what, what their training is or what their history is and actually watch them create art. Now some of your funding uh, organizations uh, like the Knight Foundation and other uh, uh, organizations are providing some funding. Um, how do you uh, try to bring those people and show them, bring them in and show them that this is a worthwhile uh, organization to promote the art in this area? Um, I, I think you know that that is a, a key. Uh, the key to that is just what is the impact on our community, mm -hmm. and it is not only on the quality of life in our community, but it's also on the financial impact of our community. We have a, um, a program called Artists as an Entrepreneur Institute, and that is to help give artists all the things that they need to actually be able to make a living. So it's whether it's business planning, um, how do they brand themselves, um, how do they find out where their niche in the art. Um, world is, and those are things that the funders are looking for. How do you? How are you making a difference not only in our community but in the individual artists? Now we have still organizations that, for many years, have been sponsoring and helping artists. The Artists of the Rubber City, correct? Uh, Akron Society of Artists, mm -hmm. the ASA, Cuyahoga Valley Arts Council. Okay. Uh, those organizations are still active with Summit Art Space, correct? They are, um, and we encourage that, you know, that unity and that ability to give artists that support system. Um, mm -hmm. They're also good at critiquing each other's work, um, and they organize some shows that, that do the same thing that we're doing, but we just do it collectively. But we house two of those organizations within Summit Art Space, um, and our role in that is to also help bring draw attention to them and to help them bring new members in. Um, the mentoring of new artists with old artists is probably one of the most valuable things that that those organizations can do um, because we can talk about it from a from an art center point of view, but for an artist to talk about it to an artist is much better. It's much more impactful. There are some really exciting uh, programs coming up as I look ahead. Even. Uh, 
into other cities, like you said, Barberton. Uh, uh, they call it the Summit Art Space on Tusk. Correct. Uh, West Tuscarawas Avenue, the main, one of the main uh, thoroughfares in, in Barberton. And uh, access there is obviously uh, fairly good. They have exciting programs in, in that area. They have the Lake Anna area uh, that uh, people can get involved in and see, see uh, art out in the streets. And, and so uh, tell me how, how Barberton evolved from the Summit Art Space, the uh, downtown Akron one, how did it evolve, do you recall? Yep, that's a great question. Um, so um, Mayor Bill Judge established an arts and entertainment district, right. which is the downtown, which is First or Second Street and Tusk. Mm -hmm. And an organization um, called NDS, Neighborhood Development Center, actually started um, started that community arts center. It's in a, a city-owned building, so it's a collaboration with the city. Um, they started it, and then, you know, they're great at developing neighborhoods. They they realized that you know someone else maybe could do an art center better, yeah. so they approached um, Summit Art Space to take that over. So we did that in 2016. Then, going back to the original Summit Art Space uh, on Market Street, uh, it's really just east of the uh, Akron Art Museum. Or right uh, behind them. Right behind it. <laughs> very close to the University of Akron campus right. uh, uh, within uh, walking distance. So uh, tell me how accessible uh, to the public, what are some of the, how do you open, when, when do these uh, times uh, occur during the week, let's say a typical week? Um, well, that's, um, one of the things we'd like to be open is open every day, but we can't, and that is basically just funding. Okay. So we're open on Thursday and Friday from 12 to 7 and Saturday 12 to 5. So three days. Mm -hmm. And then the artists, of course, can work uh, throughout the week. The artists uh, work in their studios anytime they want. Okay. Um, and we, we encourage them and want them to be in the studios when we're open so that the community has access to them. This is an amazing uh, program because Summit Art Space is, I think, one of the unique places. And I've traveled around uh, you know, this country, uh, some of the larger cities, some of the medium cities. This is one of the most unique uh, artist venues I've seen. Um, I think we're unique in a couple ways. Number one, um, we're unique because we try to do both um, exhibits, supportive artists, and, and, and community education, which is, that's a very unique, also our size is very unique. Right. And we're a 55,000 square foot building in Akron. Um, and that is, that is large. Multiple and when you look stories. At, correct. Correct. Um, we also have event space. We have a lot of people that want to hold their either a workshop or or an, an awards ceremony there because they want to be in that creative um, energy. Kind of a festival. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the programs that it, we're going to take a break a little bit, but what are some of the programs you can think about that are coming up in the next uh, several months? Uh, especially as we look ahead to 2018. Just want to pause for a moment. Our guest is Camelia Fisher, Executive Director of the Summit Art Space, uh, both in downtown Akron and in Barberton. And uh, Camelia Fisher is with us here on our Forum 360. Uh, I'm Bill Steven Souse. We're on Fusion Western Reserve Public Television. We're on the Hudson Community TV, and we're heard on Rubber City Radio here in the Akron area. And uh, again, our program is a global outlook, local view. We're taking a, a major uh, program of art. We're bringing artists locally, and our guest, Camelia Fisher, is kind of introducing us to the Summit Art Space. It's called Places for the Creative. Correct. That's a good uh, motto, a good uh, art, art understanding. Uh, you have the Summit Art Space, the third floor. What, uh, that's a, a program that I noticed you're uh, opening up. So what are some of the things going on, on the, in the event space in the third floor coming up? Um, so generally those are events that are booked by, for fundraisers or for uh, private receptions. Uh, but once a month we host Art Walk. Uh, and Art Walk is on the first Saturday of every month from five to nine, and we have pop-up artists that are, will set up in that area as well. So not only do you get to see our regular artists, but you get to see some unique things that um, pop-up artists are bringing in. And we also are open um, extra on third Thursdays. And I've walked through uh, during a, a show, an art gallery program there, and it's so well organized. And uh, you, you, but you move around the building and you, uh, you discover all of a sudden you're moving and you see uh, metal work, you see metal smithing, move around a little bit, you see 
uh, some multi multi media, uh, and then and then regular traditional, um, I would say visual arts with painting. Uh, so tell me, how do you set up the the spaces? Is it is it something by design? or do you let the artists help pick where they're going to be located, or how do you do that? That's interesting. Um, so what we try to do is we try to not have two artists that are representing the exact same type of art um, side by side. And we all, so we have sections that they're in, and you know, if you're interested in, in becoming an artist, you, you fill out an application, and then we kind of see where you're going to fit. A lot of it has to do with the size studio you need. Um, so we have very small studios. We have studios that are 90 square feet um, to studios that are as large as 525. Wow. Now, for instance, this uh, program that we alluded to earlier called Parallax, which is Parallax, this is the, uh, the theme for some modern art uh, going on during the summer uh, months here. I'd like to ask you, with respect to this type of a program. It's called, a, it's a juried program. So the artists are, uh, reviewers come in and tell us how that, how that works. Sure. So um, your work is submitted um, online through a program called Submittable. And as when you go to our website, you know, you just follow the steps on that. Um, and then a juror uh, looks at it blind. So it's mm -hmm. a blind juror show. Um, and he um, or she will make the selection of the pieces that they that they have chosen to come in, and then they're dropped off, and then that juror also judges them, um, and uh, first through third and honorable mentions. So there is, and award. they still don't know who they are. Still okay. blind. So we have first place, second place, and an honorable mention. And I think the other part about that education piece that I want to talk about a little bit for that is, so we have a panel discussion um, with each e exhibit. So mm -hmm. that is the jurors there, and then the award-winning artists are there, as well as some of the other artists that maybe had a very unusual uh, piece or they have an unusual story or technique that but they weren't an award winner and they're also on that panel uh, and that is going to be for Parallax is August 16th at 7 and that is a great way to learn more about the work in the show or to learn more about those artists. One I uh, ex expressed earlier uh, that artists seem to want to flock to that area because it is it's it's uh it's not really set up uh, very it's not in a sense contemporary. It looks as you walk by the building downtown on, on East Market Street, it looks old. It looks like uh, this is something almost antiqueish, and uh, I do like that. It, have you found that people like the organization, like the where you the, the chosen uh, venue there? I the think building. they do. I think the other thing that um, people are intrigued by, um, they always say, what was this building? Mm -hmm. Because it says Akron Public Library on the front, but it was really built in 1928 for the Akron Beacon Journal. Oh, really? And See. so I, I have a great gig. Um, I start every day in my office, which was John S. Knight's office. Right. Um, wow. So that's a great way to start your day. Uh, so just giving the history of that building, I think they're intrigued once they get in it. Uh, so it's an interesting combination of the history that is so important to Akron and then what's happening in Akron now, which is totally, um, totally different than the, right. than the than structure. The yeah. structure. <laughs> now, uh, I, I found uh, visiting the uh, Summit Art Space that you have tenant applications, there's a process, the Artist Studio and Creative Business Center. Explain a little bit about that. Uh, how. Uh, you set that up and uh, people can apply for a tenancy at Summit Art Space. Right, so they can pick an application up um, at, the, at Summit Art Space so they can go online and do it. Um, and they can, it's either as a traditional artist, and by tradition I mean you want to be in your studio, you want to be creating. Mm -hmm. uh, we, they also have an opportunity to sell out of their studios, which I think is a really important um, opportunity for them. Right. And then we also have an application for the Creative Business Center. Mm -hmm. And the Creative Business Center is for arts-related organizations or individuals that, um, and it, you, so you have a very affordable um, space and it's like just an office space that we provide all the um, ancillary services so that you can do all those things you need to do without the overhead of a big office on your own. Uh, and then of course is the, um, we have solo artists. If you want to exhibit and have a solo show, you can also make that presentation. And Camelia, if uh, we could share that website again, it's www.summitartspace.org. Correct. .org. Uh, and there is a, uh, 
an office uh, that provides information. We have 330, uh, area code 376. 8480, that's 330 So if people are interested. Um, so we set this 140 East Market Street location. We just found out, interestingly, it was the original Akron Beacon Journal. Your office as executive director of Summit Art Space is in the old John S. Knight office, or John S. Knight uh, uh, w when he was editor and publisher. That's amazing. Uh, then tell us, do you think other uh, cities and communities in Summit County are going to want to uh, maybe add, do like Barberton and provide, uh, uh, you think you foresee any of that, any expansion? I think I, I do. I think one of the programs that I would like to see happen is that um, we expand our, our what we're offering into communities that can't necessarily where I say our doors are open and, and it's accessible to everybody, we know it's not. Mm -hmm. There are many underserved um, organizations um, that that have maybe have we could collaborate with, so we could establish some art galleries and some art classes in those communities, um, and and and. You know, we have artists all over we don't even know because right. they don't. I use my grandmother as a perfect example. So my grandmother, uh, my grandfather passed away when she was um, about 70 years old and I, she had no idea what she was gonna do and somebody suggested she go to the senior center. Um, she found out she was an artist. She had never held a paintbrush. She had never drawn in her life. Um, so you never know those artists that are out there among you. Um, and she was a great watercolorist. Uh, so I hope to I hope to find those people before they're seventy, right? Um, and give them the opportunity and the voice of art because, you know, there's no wrong answer in art. It either speaks to the person that that's viewing it, or another piece speaks to them. But I think it's nice to give that. Most artists have a lot of information in there and a lot of emotion that they want to get out. So cre and creative, can, creative skills. And right, if we can give that to them, that would be great. That brings us to education. Uh, do you find that there could be a collaboration, maybe there already is with the schools in the area, um, art teachers, art professors, universities, colleges. Do you see any uh, any broadening in that area? I do. Um, we, we did a program called Tra Traveling Stanzas with uh, Kent State, mm -hmm. um, with the Wick Center, and I it was poetry, and you could actually, it was an interactive um, exhibit that you could come in and actually write add lines to poetry, wow. and those are the things that I think truly do um, you know, change the way we view what art is. Um, so the right. written word wasn't necessarily art. Right, um, at one time we didn't expect it to be. Correct, correct. Uh, we've, we've, we've expanded art in our understanding, which is awesome. Um, we have, uh, there's receptions, you have receptions, uh, uh, when artists are start a show, uh, tell us some of the things you do socially uh, with the artists that uh, so that they can work interact with the community, do a reception. Right. So, so the, the um, we do have receptions for every opening, and it is always the first night from five to eight, and that's in both locations. Mm -hmm. And our goal during that time is to um, a couple things to introduce the artists to the community and the artists that are in the exhibit, but also to celebrate their work um, and. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have a bio of, of all the artists and, and we have the juror statement. So you can actually blend in, um, blend in with the art, but blend in with the artist. Uh, so we've had as many as 500 people come to an, uh, an okay. opening. Right. It just depends on what the, what the reception is. You're gonna definitely want to come to our next opening, which we um, have the good fortune of housing the visual arts portion of the High Arts Festival. So that will open September 14th, and we expect about 1,000 people to come through That's that awesome. night. So the, uh, all, all around the Buckeye State, all around Ohio, people, artists will be uh, converging on the Summit Art Space. Um, again, it's Summit Art Space, uh, places for the creative. Um, both locations, uh, 571 West Tuscarawas in Barberton, and the uh, original location, 140 East Market Street, downtown Akron. Our guest is Executive Director, uh, Camelia Fisher, uh, Summit Art Space. Uh, before we uh, close today, I just wanted to ask you if you have a uh, vision, uh, as I said earlier, for 2019, and uh, as we, we move ahead, uh, what is your vision? What do you want to see a year in uh, 2019? What are some hopes and dreams? Um, I, I think it's really important to make sure that all our exhibits are very um, 
reflective of what's going on in our community, um, whether it's going on just for our artists or whether it's going on in the community in general. Uh, I think the other thing that I, we do need to involve more, more kids and more families in what we're doing. Uh, so there, ever since I've been at Summit Art Space, we've been having conversations about how do we get our artists um, and, and our, our creative, um, uh, um, creative minds, how do we get them out there so that we can do more of that mentoring back and forth between artists and young artists? Well, Camelia Fisher, I want to thank you for being a part of uh, Forum 360 on our uh, Fusion Western Reserve Public TV, Hudson Community TV, and uh, Rubber City Radio. And I hope and uh, am looking forward to more activities at the Summit Art Space. Again, uh, the phone number, 330-376-8480. Uh, you can also look up Summit Art Space on www.summitartspace.org. And uh, I want to thank you for being a thank part you. of us uh, It's Forum 360. Uh, it seems like a pioneer in the area of art in Ohio. Uh, and so Summit Art Space. Folks, I hope you can visit one of the events. And Camelia, thank you very much thank for you. being a part of this thank program, you. Forum you. 360. Thank you. Thank you, folks, for watching. Forum 360 is brought to you by Electrical Impulse Communications, the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, an anonymous donor, the Jewish Community Board of Akron, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Blue Green, and Forum 360 supporters.